deceit. I mean, the minute we say that, we all think, well, that's lying. It's, at least it's a type of a lie. And yeah, it, it is a lie. But how is this different than, well, we've seen blaspheming as lying or slandering. We've seen the word pseudos, we get that false. We see that even in our modern, we use that uh, pseudoscience, false or fake science, things like that. Um, <clears throat> a pseudonym, fake name for somebody that writes. What is this particular word deceit from the word um, dolos? What does this word mean? You probably never heard the Greek word dolos. That's, I don't know that we use a form of this in English. We're going to talk a little bit about this type of deceit today. I'm Pastor Tim Holscher, and we are looking at the ministry of the Spirit and the life of the believer that he empowers us. He empowers us in one way, one of the reasons, it's not the only, but one of the reasons that he empowers us is so that we can put on the armor of God. And we put it on because Satan deceives us, because Satan tempts us to go down a certain path and do things that are inappropriate. And as Peter's writing to his readers in 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse 1, he says, therefore putting aside all evil, or we have this word malice here in the New American Standard, uh, kakia, all things that, that lack in character. It's not what it should be. It's not the way it should be. And then all deceit. And that word deceit is translated in some place guile, G-U-I-L-E, guile. Here they translate it deceit, and I like deceit because, well, you know, we, most people don't have any idea really what guile is. It's not a word we use in modern English a great deal. But all deceit and then hypocrisy. Hypocrisy is also sort of a form of lying. It's saying one thing and doing another. So that is kind of lying, telling people to do something, but you do a different thing. And then an envy and all evil speaking. They, they translate this word slander, but this is literally to speak against. <clears throat> but like newborn babes, just born babes, uh, like them, he says, he says, you ought to long for or crave for the logical guileless. Now, if you can look here in the Greek, you can see that the last part of this word is the same as this. It just has this little letter that looks like an A on the beginning of the alpha, which means it's not guile. It's not deceitful. Milk. And most of our people say the milk of the word, but it's the logical. This is actually an adjective. It's the logical guileless milk in order that by it you may grow into salvation. That's not how you get saved. That's how you're saved in your growth, your present tense. It's growing up in your salvation is what he's talking about. But he says you need to put away guile. What is guile? Guile is a form of deceit that likes to mix some truth with error. It's the best lie. Some lies are just bold-faced lies. Guile lays emphasis on the fact that you mix some truth with some air. I had a friend many years ago that said, if you took some arsenic and you tainted your glass of milk at breakfast or your orange juice with arsenic, hmm, how much arsenic does it take to put in there for it to be poisoned? Does it have to be 100% arsenic? Half? Would you want even 10% of your orange juice at breakfast to be arsenic? Would you want even 1%? No, you, you get the point. We wouldn't want any in there. And if you're like me, you don't know how much it actually would take to do you harm and kill you. A little bit. Air and truth, or truth, I guess I've been doing in air. Back in the book of Acts in chapter 13, Paul is on, Paul and Barnabas are on their, what we call their first missionary, technically it's an apostolic journey, trip, and they are on the island of, of uh, Cyprus, and they're speaking to uh, a regional ruler there, and there is this other man that's, that's there that is uh, here, it's verse 8. But Elymas, the magician, for so his name is translated, was opposing them, seeking to turn the proconsul, proconsul was a, this regional ruler, away from the faith. So Paul and Silas have won this man, and 
this this magician now, he doesn't want him to pursue this any further. But Saul, who was also known as Paul, filled with the Holy Spirit. And this word filling, if you remember, means the Spirit has filled him and taken control. This is different than the filling we have. Uh, that's play rao. This is playtho. Uh, he says, filled with the Holy Spirit, fixed his gaze on him and said, you are full. Notice this, you are full of all, not just some, all deceit. In other words, everything you say, you, you, yours is like, yours is like 10% truth, 90% deceit, perhaps, or 20% truth and 80%. You get the point. In other words, the, everything that comes out of your mouth is being deceptive. And then he uses fraud here also, uh, which is another word to, to take advantage of a person. But he's, then he goes, you're a son of the devil or the slanderer. You're an enemy of righteousness. Will you not cease to make crooked the straight ways of the Lord? So, in other words, what they're, ta what they're teaching, the straight ways of the Lord, he's perverting them because he's adding error to it. And it makes the path, these things regarding the Lord, crooked. And he connects him with the devil. And the New American Standard doesn't capitalize devil because they're uncertain as to whether you're referring to to the one we would refer to as the devil, the slanderer, or whether it's referring to uh, just the fact that he's characterized by one who slanders. I think this is a place that it's demonstrating that he's a son of the devil, son of the slanderer, uh, because he's demonstrating it in his own character. <clears throat> in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, uh, Paul says, therefore, since we have this ministry, just as we, just as we have uh, received mercy, we are not discouraged, but we have renounced the shameful hidden deeds. Notice in verse, verse 2, these things that we don't want to do, these hidden things, we do not practice cunning. This is a word that's actually used for Satan, where it's like saying he's got all these tools in his belt and he uses them to, to mess us up, to deceive us. Neither do we tamper with the word of God. And that word tamper, it's a verbal form of this word, uh, dolas, so, uh, dolao, if you want to know what the Greek is. But this, the, the point of this, when he's talking about this idea of tampering here, and that tampering is the way uh, Mounts um, uh, translates this, uh, and I think it's good because think about a lot of times when pe people take the word of God Instead of taking it for what it says, they play games with it and they tamper it so that when it's they're done, you didn't really get from it what the Word of God said. You got another idea. And Paul says, that's not the way we, we were. Paul says, when we're presenting the Word of God, and Paul's not carrying a Bible with him like this, obviously. Paul's giving the Word orally to these people as God's given him oral revelation. Uh, he, he does have Old Testament revelation, but the revelation for how New Testament Christians are to live, this was something that the Lord had been revealing to him. And he says, and we don't do that. We're not treating that word, this oral revelation. We're not treating it. We're not tampering it. We're not playing with it to, to say what we want to say. It's a, let's put it this way. It's a challenge, I think, for anybody that teaches the Word of God to be enamored with some idea that they come up with. And sometimes that idea that they come up with may have actually come from the devil, the slander, who realize there's no better way to mess up the teaching of what God has given us than to start sprinkling in a little air and a little bit more and a little bit more. And as a result of doing that, well, we mess the word of God up and people then come away and there's a chance that they understand the word of God even less. I've sat and I, I probably have done it myself, but I've sat in Bible studies where I've listened to people present part of the Word of God, and they get an idea. I listened, there's a passage in, in 2 Timothy 2 where it talks about, our, some of your Bibles say, handling correctly the Word of Truth. And the, literally, the Greek is to cut a straight course. You need to cut a straight path so people can clearly see what the truth is. And this man 
read, saw the word handle in his translation, and instead of examining what it looked at, he got this great idea that, hey, I took a fencing class in college. Oh, and the word of God is called the sword. So it's like handling the sword so I can duel with people, which is actually what Paul warns against. Don't get into fights, he actually tells him in that immediate context. You're not going to duel with them with the word of God. You just cut a straight course for the people that want to know the truth. Just cut it straight. That's what you need to do. But see, the way that happens when we tamper with the Word of God, again, we become enamored with an idea, and we can run with it. And sometimes, not always, sometimes that's just our inclination. But a lot of times, I think it comes with the deceit that Satan comes along with. And it sprinkles a little bit of air into our truth, to the truth, and it messes it up and people go away not really understanding what God wanted us to know. This is something he says that we need to get rid of. We need to get rid of this kind of lying, this kind of mixing some error in with truth. It's a convincing lie. If it's at least largely truth or there's a good chunk of it that's truth, but the error really makes that truth, well, neuters it messes it up, confuses people. And we don't want to do that. We want people to understand, understand the Word of God. We want people to understand, appreciate what God's doing. So in the end, if we are tempted to do this, we need to recognize that this is a temptation from Satan. It's a variety of lying. And in doing so, we're not going to be giving people what they need. And therefore, we're going to need to put on the armor of God. And we're going to need that strength from the Spirit so we can do so. So that we can handle the word right. So not only can we have a good day in the Lord, but we can be helping others as they understand the word of God accurately, truthfully presented. To also have a good day in the Lord. Thank you for joining me today.